I had the feeling that we have a fantastic place, but that artistic, that there's a lack of go or a lack of confidence in people, and especially artists. I, I love my town, you know, and I love my community, and there's a great, uh, there's a great camaraderie and kind of wit here as well, you know. When I was very young, uh, my dad was um, was an artist, an amateur artist, but he was I admired him because he was very versatile. He could do any kind of painting or anything at all with his hands, except play violin. <laughs> uh, so um, he was uh, a great inspiration for me. And I remember when I was maybe uh, when I was in junior infants. Um, oh no, I think I was a senior infants and. Uh, I was asked to do some homework, and I wasn't, we weren't used to homework, of course, so I did a little drawing, and, and I went into school, I don't know that I forget my homework, but I brought the drawing in anyway, and uh, of course, when I realised that there was homework due, I kind of was kind of panicked, but the nun uh, was very nice to me, and she showed my work to other teachers in other classes, so I, I suppose that was the, the first time that I felt that it was, you know, different to do drawing. And then, of course, my dad encouraged me all the way. And I um, here won a couple of competitions now and then. And then um, I remember my dad said, no, okay, it's time for, time for you now to, we, I'll sit you down and teach you, you know, the, the tricks of the trade and how to draw properly and paint. And um, so he, one Saturday morning, I'll never forget, he gave me a haircut. With his, <laughs> with his scissors and uh, skid me of course and clipped my ears and then sat me down and said no let's let's I'll give you an art class now and I think we lasted probably like three minutes because I wouldn't listen to him he wouldn't he thought I was a very bad student <laughs> he, he said uh, discretion was the, the better the part of bravery and just said forget it and but I always watched him and um, uh, that was that he was my greatest inspiration, and I had an uncle then. Uh, he was he was in the Vatican, and um, he showed me when I was like a student. Uh, he brought me to see the Sistine Chapel, and the tourists would go in there at eleven o'clock. So we arrived in around ten thirty in the Vatican, a lovely August morning, and um, he said, "No, just stay there until I." Um, come back and I was there on my own in, in the Sistine Chapel and I, I was kind of a bit overcome so then I lay down and I looked up at, in, from the middle of the, 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 the chapel at, at all the, the works of Michelangelo and it was kind of like you know I, I felt I was looking at something divine and I was very lucky to be there Michelangelo and myself and his fantastic works of art and that was like a kind of a moment that I tried to... I, I went to the Middle East and when, when I was there, of course, I had no Arabic and the students had no English. I, my purpose was to teach them. They had no interest in learning. They had no interest in reading, they had no interest in words or books or anything got to do a challenge, challenging. So um, I used to do a lot of drawing for them and they proceeded to tear everything that I ever did from the uh, walls. And I said, how am I going to get over this? So um, I started drawing marker drawings of physics and chemistry and biology as well on the walls of the class and they could not tear them down, they began to light them. And that was the beginning of my mural work. But before that, um, when I was a young fella, uh, I used to like to draw people, and I couldn't, there was nobody would sit down for me because they'd always want to um, play football and stuff, you know, go outside and they wouldn't, nobody would sit down and pose for me for more than 30 seconds. And uh, so <clears throat> then I was thinking I should maybe do it at mass, and then my father said, you're mad. I didn't. And then the only other place where people sat down was in the court. So I went to Trilly Court and I sit down and 
draw people because they, they just sit still. They wouldn't uh, run away or anything like that, run out play football. So um, then when uh, I gave up teaching in Ireland, uh, I started, uh, I rang a friend of mine who said, yeah, of course you should draw in the courts, you know, and uh, up in Dublin. So there was a, I went up to a court in, I think, January 2000 and I think it was 12 or 13. But there was a massive murder trial on, and it was, old reviewers now remember this, it was Eamon Lillis, it was, he apparently, he was charged with murdering his wife. And it was, it was a captivating case that went on for weeks. And the very first day that I went in, I um, got my, my, my work published in newspapers all over the country, all over the national newspapers. And then I was doing that, like once or twice a week for five years in Dublin, and I, I sketched murders and rapists and paedophiles and cannibals and lawyers and everybody, everybody that could do, that is sit down. Yeah, so, so then I, I, do, I, I like to do murals. I love artwork and I, I have an itch every morning to just draw and paint because it makes me feel happy and if it makes other people feel happy, that makes it uh, fantastic. And also, um, I've met a whole lot of people through my art as well more people than I can think of and um, I, if I had any message for people is to just follow your dream and have the confidence to do so because it will make you happy and will also open opportunities for you as well because we, when I was a young fella I got a place in the art college in Crawf Crawford and Cork and I didn't take it. My, my parents said, sure you, you, can, you can do that afterwards so I went off and I did teaching. And I, I, I kind of half regret it in ways, you know. But now I'm back where I wanted to be, you know, creating art and stuff like that. We don't have to, um, we don't have to look, say, beyond Trilly or Kerry or anywhere like that to find um, people who have these different kind of interests. Or like last night, I was I met this guy who was amazing. Um, wrestler. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he, he, he would. Um, it's just remarkable, like the funny and interesting things that you find here in Chile. You know, um, even though sometimes we often feel it's kind of dead and boring and stuff. Like, there's a lot of interesting things going on. You know, under under the surface. You know, ninety nine percent of my work is um, motion. You know, so there's you see very little static imagery because it just bores me. <laughs> so m most of what I, what I do and create is, um, involves movement of nature, an uh, animals, people, and um, that just excites me. And as well as that, um, a lot of my work uh, would, would involve some kind of aspiring movement. So that's what I try and try, but not always, but that's what I try to achieve. And I just got that from looking at Leonardo's pieces, you know, and reading about him, that the human form was always kind of in, in a kind of dynamic motion, you know, so <clears throat> I like that. So therefore I like dancers and gymnasts and people doing funny things. And um, I like that, that idea. And I think the static image is just bored, just bores me. If I go to Berlin or I go to Belgrade or these places where I like to go now and then. Uh, the place is full of this visual culture. It's probably mad, but it's, it's, there's a great um, expression in it and drive and people, uh, I think if, they, if you come from that environment back here, you realize that it's like, it's clean as a laboratory, which is all nice and everything. It's like very well kept, which is fantastic, but it's like the room that was never in a house that was never occupied. and. Um, uh, visual culture seems to be a little bit lacking here. Um, so, coming back with these ideas in my head, um, I approach people here and there around Trilly and I said, you don't mind if I do something there? I say, yeah, yeah whatever, that's okay. And so I produced these uh, murals, which were all very kind of quick works around the town. And I got like, a fantastic reaction from them, you know, so these, that drove me on to do more stuff. And then, uh, I decided to go professional, so I'm um, doing these things professionally now and I have a few jobs going on at the moment in parallel and um, 
So that's that's very nice. And I feel I, I don't have the security that say salary would have, but I have the the drive to create and you know to to at long last to kind of follow what dream I've ever had, you know.